Yo, what is up? My name is Ice Grenade. Welcome to another tutorial. And today I'm showing you everything about key bindings and how to be a much more efficient user in Radiant. So number one is we have all of these little buttons at the top on this toolbar. You can actually rearrange these if you go through all of them and see, oh, okay, well, yeah, I don't think I ever use that. But just make sure you, you know, you test it out and you see what it does and you know what it does before you remove it. So you might find some things up there that you want to keep that you weren't aware of before. Four. I've quickly just nuked my registry so I can show you guys what I've done here to make some changes. So the first thing is we're going to press Control K and do the edit toolbars option. And I've never, I never seen a reason to use this one here. So I'm just going to drag this down and boom, you'll see that it gets rid of it. You'll see stamp prefab and primitives. So I've added these in because I find that, okay, well, when you want to stamp a prefab, you can right click and then you got to go down and go down and hit stamp prefab. And that's one, two, three, four movements and click five movements. Whereas if I go up here, I've just got a stamp prefab in one button. So I can just go bang and then carry on. And it's like two movements, move up, click. Saves me three movements. All these little tiny differences in time that it takes to get to do something results in such a dramatic change in how much more you can do when you're mapping because you spend less time going around the UI and you make the UI work more for you. So we wanna add the stamp prefab up here like I had a second ago. So let's do stamp prefab and go back. And then we just want to drag this up onto the toolbar like that. Now I only have to click that button when I want to stamp a prefab. The next thing is I want to do primitive objects. So if I do primitive here and I go to patch and I drag and drop here, now we have primitive objects here. So I can just click and do primitive objects. So yeah, you're going to want to do this for a lot of things. And there's another one here. I never use this as well. This is the structural non-colliding, basically setting the properties of a brush or an object that you're using. So I never use that. So I'm going to just drag that down. We need to have the enable toolbar selected. So I'm going to just drag it down and it's gone yeah I, whenever i'm changing the properties of a brush or something i also do right click and make structural use the right click for it every time another little comment i should throw in is how i got all of the patch buttons up here so if you're creating patches a lot you might find this quite useful if you go all the way over here to view and you go down to view toolbar you can actually toggle out various parts of the toolbar itself and one of the ones that i seem to use a lot is the patch toolbar. So I'm just gonna click on that and you'll see all of these options pop up. And one of the great things about adding this patch toolbar on is that you have a quick access to the simple terrain patch, which otherwise would take a few clicks to get there. Okay, so we're just gonna do a little example here. We've made a little brush and I'm gonna go to patch, terrain, simple terrain patch, and then here you have the terrain options. So instead of doing that, what we can do, I've just undone that, is hit this button and then bang, in one click, it's done the same thing. Much quicker, much more efficient. And that's a good reason to have this patch toolbar showing. So the next thing is we can actually change some of the hotkeys. So if you go around your map, you know that you hold shift to select something and you press escape to deselect it. Well, all these key bindings can be adjusted. You're going to want to press control K, which will open up the key bindings window. And in here, you're going to be setting a whole load of things. So I'm going to tell you all the things that I've set to make my life easier. And you can either use these or use your own. I would advise never overriding existing ones. So the first one is half patch. I've set my half patch to the asterisk key on the number pad and that on its own is not used in Radiant to my knowledge and it didn't come up with any overrides. And this just makes it insanely easy to be messing with patches faces to terrain. So originally when you want to create a face to terrain, what you would do is you'd select the top with shift control and you'd go up here to patch and then you go to terrain and then face it to terrain. However, that is one movement all the way up here, then onto here, then onto terrain, and then across, and then down to faces, and then click. And to me, that's a lot of movement. All I do now is hit shift forward slash, and bang, instantly, I have face to terrain applied because I set the hotkey of shift forward slash on the number pad and that does it. So make sure that when I'm saying forward slash asterisk and all these things, that they're the ones on the number pad. Don't use the one next to the right shift. Okay, so if I go to faces, you, all you have to do is type into this little filter here, faces to terrain, and you'll see it here. You see terrain, faces to terrain, and you'll see nothing's here. If you just click in here and hit shift forward slash, 
you'll see it pop up. Okay, so the next thing is, say you want to multiply this patch up, you want more than four vertices on it. We already have a hotkey for that, and that is control asterisk. And you can press that as many times as you like, and it will keep going up. But we don't have a hotkey for half patch, which is the opposite, and that's one that I've created. So if we go to half patch, you'll see that I've made it as asterisk on its own because that isn't used. If we look now, I hit asterisk to go down, and I hold control and hit asterisk to go up. And because they're so similar, it's super easy to remember and it's a nice little hotkey to add. Okay, so that is just some of these hotkeys that I've assigned and how I have set up this menu is slightly better for faster use and uh, just more efficiency, really. But there are a lot more that you can do and there's a lot more that I will be doing in future. But the thing is, as you're going around mapping, you'll be working and then you'll be doing something and you think, oh, actually, that seems like a bit of a chore. And then you'll press Control K, go have a look. You can either type in what you're trying to do, aka half patch is one of them and then you'll find it or you can type in the command that is used to get there and it will show you the listed things so in this case i just typed in the asterisk and it shows you half patch and then next to it it shows you the double patch so you could actually switch those over if you prefer but i tend to keep most of the defaults yeah i haven't changed those as you're mapping make sure you just keep adding more and more and yeah you'll be saving more time so say that you wish to restore defaults, you can do that quickly by pressing this button. And if we do that and press asterisk, you'll see that my half patch binding has gone. But you may wish to do this if you accidentally overrode the wrong thing or you did something and you weren't sure what you did. But say that you want to reset this toolbar. This restore defaults won't do it. So you're probably wondering, oh, okay, how the hell do I do? I accidentally deleted one of these. Fear not, all you have to do is press P and go over to system and do a new new registry settings. This will remove all of the main profile settings that is stored for this application. So you'll find all your windows will move around. So you just have to move those back into place and it will also bring all of these buttons back up. But that is a way to return back to default if in the event that you actually did something that you didn't mean to do. I hope this tutorial has helped you guys out. Other than that, take it easy everyone and I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget to smash the like button if this helped you out and subscribe to stay tuned. All right, see ya. Pretty much everywhere has got the awesome custom font and let me show you exactly how you can apply your